with Pokemon Go reintroducing the world to Pokemania, now felt like the best time to show off a few rare and expensive handhelds that took advantage of Pokemon's global domination two decades ago. It's worth pointing out, however, that this episode of The Rarest will be way more focused on the products themselves rather than the actual prices, as I'll be perfectly honest, trying to accurately price many of these items is extremely difficult due to many being in various states of quality. Just please remember that this isn't a countdown, but rather a showcase where I'm highlighting multiple limited edition handhelds, which happen to include the rarest Pokemon Game Boy systems of all time. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let the fun begin, and good luck catching them all. In the very first episode of The Rarest, I talked at length about the Pikachu-themed Game Boy SP, and more than a year later, that particular handheld is still considered fairly rare. However, what I didn't know at the time was how much rarer the rest of the Game Boy Advance SP Pokemon collection was. Essentially, this theme set of Game Boy Advances were, like many of the items on this showcase, made as limited edition systems to promote the third generation of games. Some of these designs included cover mascots like Groudon, Kyogre, Rayquaza, Venusaur, Charizard, and a special five-year anniversary Torchic version that was sold exclusively in Japanese Pokemon centers. Now, as typical with most console or handheld limited editions, there's no specific number to go off of, but in terms of price, regardless of whichever design you're drawn to, any of these babies complete in box are likely going to cost you upwards of $200. And in reality, that's me playing it safe. So, like Pokemon themselves, these special edition Game Boys come in all sorts of colors, shapes, and sizes, and would make great additions to any serious Pokemon collection. Around the same time as the SP collection was being introduced, the special Pokemon edition Game Boy Advances were just coming to an end. Similarly to the last entry, these limited edition systems were produced to commemorate specific games or events in the Pokemon franchise. But unlike the SPs, these Game Boys were far more collectible. All four of these designs were Pokemon Center exclusives, with only one being available at the long-defunct Pokemon Center New York. These handhelds were virtually the exact same model, but featured franchise superstars like Suicune, Celebi, Pikachu and Pichu, and even Latios and Latias to promote the fifth movie. Among them all, I personally believe that the Latios and Latias GBA is the hardest to find, with the Pikachu and Pichu version being the easiest to get a hold of due to it being released stateside. And also, for those wondering, as far as I can tell, pricing is pretty consistent with elusiveness when it comes to these Game Boys. Either way, all of these items sell for upwards of $150 complete in box, with the rarer ones going for way more than that. So yeah, due to the time period, these GBAs are pretty similar to their SP successors in terms of rarity and price, but trust me when I say that they both have nothing on our final entry. Now, I know it seems crazy that we're already into the last few systems, but most of the remaining rare handhelds are a part of the DS and 3DS family, and I'd rather just save those for another video down the line as some are still being produced. But regardless, when it comes to rare Pokemon handhelds, nothing beats the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Light. Now, both of these systems were released during a period when Pokemon ruled the world, so as expected, there are a lot of limited edition designs. Many of these were actually more common than you'd think, including both the Pikachu and Johto themed Game Boy Colors. However, for my money, the rarest Game Boys ever made were once again the Pokemon Center exclusives. The Pokemon Center Orange and Blue with artwork and logo Game Boy Color is as rare as it is a poorly chosen official name. Most people refer to this one as the Orange Starter Game Boy, and it was released as a way to commemorate the series' third anniversary. What's cool about this item is that it's the only Game Boy to feature all three original starters, and as you can see, their designs weren't exactly finalized yet, which makes this a big piece for collectors. Currently, this is one of, if not the most expensive handheld to buy on the secondhand market, as inbox prices typically sell anywhere between $500 to over $1,000 depending on the condition. And around the same time as this wonder was released, fans could also purchase the yellow with logo and artwork Pokemon-themed Game Boy Light, which was created as a promotion for Pokemon the first movie, and once again sold exclusively at the Tokyo Pokemon Center. The reason this device is considered the rarest in its field is due to it being released in both limited numbers, but also for a handheld that never really caught on the same way as the Game Boy Color, making this system the crown jewel for many Game Boy collecting enthusiasts. In terms of price, it's usually found in the same range as the third anniversary Game Boy I mentioned earlier, but trust me when I say that this Game Boy Light featuring Bulbasaur, Horsey, and Lapras on its casing is the most obscure and the rarest Pokemon-themed Game Boy ever released. 
Well, I know it's all happened very quickly, but we've finally almost reached the end of Pokémon 2016. I hope you enjoyed learning about some of the cooler Pokémon Game Boys out there, and please share this video with any collector friends who might be interested in this sort of thing. Before I wrap up the month, however, there's still one long overdue video that I've been promising for a while. So, next time on Random Tens, we're gonna finally take a look at Pokémon Emerald for the Game Boy Advance. Is the game as good as I remember? Will it always be stuck in Crystal's shadow for a Gen 2 fanatic like me? Well, we'll find out next time, but until then, follow us on Twitter for news and updates, and as I always say, happy hunting baby rhinos!